Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. Let's talk about the triggers and causes of Hashimoto's. And today we're going to be talking about foods and what foods cause Hashimoto's. All right, everyone always wants to know, you know, what is the, what causes Hashimoto's? What made me have Hashimoto's? Did I do something wrong? And it's not that you did anything wrong because, you know, we know now basically that to develop an autoimmune condition, most of the time you've got to have a, a genetic predisposition, and obviously you have no control over that. Uh, you usually have to have some sort of um, leaky barrier. It could be a gut barrier, or lung barrier, or blood brain barrier, or your sinus barrier, or your skin. And then there usually has to be some kind of triggering event. Now the triggering event can be uh, any number of things. Too many for me to go in now, but it could be something inflammatory like a physical injury. It could be uh, a very stressful event because stress is inflammatory. Uh, it could be uh, just food exposure over time and just like the wrong combination of things. And so today, what we're going to talk about in terms of the causes of Hashimoto's and like the triggers for developing Hashimoto's, we're talking about foods. And the list of foods I've talked to kind of about at length because the research is pretty clear that there's about eight foods that are really problematic for Hashimoto's and for developing Hashimoto's, and here's why. Because in Hashimoto's, right, that's an autoimmune condition where you attack the inside of your thyroid gland, and the two things that you're attacking, one or both, is thyroid peroxidase, which is an enzyme, and thyroglobulin, which is a, a protein, and basically your thyroid gland uses those to make thyroid hormone, you know, T4, because about 97% of what gets released out of your thyroid gland is in the form of T4. And thyroid peroxidase can look like certain foods. There's this thing that can happen that's called cross-reaction. Sometimes we call it, you know, molecular mimicry. Uh, basically, it's that they look similar enough to the immune system that when your immune system makes antibodies, which are like little post-it notes, that it wants to stick onto the inside of your thyroid gland to the thyroid peroxidase, those same antibodies can stick on certain foods I'm going to tell you about. And it kind of goes the other way direction as well, which is if you eat those foods, you could be making your immune system make more thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Now, I just want to interject that we all have antibodies. Like there's antibodies to your thyroid floating around right now. Um, that's normal. We call those naturally occurring uh, antibodies. And they're kind of how your immune system surveils things, you know, and keeps an eye on things. But when you have a lot of them, well, then you're probably getting an autoimmune problem. You're directing your immune system to go in and kill whatever it's tagging. So the antibodies we're talking about are thyroid peroxidase antibodies and the fact that you could develop antibodies to the foods I'm talking about, okay, and those could result in thyroid peroxidase antibodies going after your thyroid, or you may already have a few thyroid peroxidase antibodies floating around, and if you develop antibodies to the foods I'm going to tell you about, then you got more thyroid peroxidase antibodies. I think we understand you know, what I'm talking about. So what, what foods are we talking about that could trigger Hashimoto's? Well, the number one thing is wheat. Uh, wheat is a problem. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. And, and wheat and milk, which is number two on the list, those are the two biggest foods that I tell people you really have to avoid if you have Hashimoto's. If you want to be super safe, you just got to avoid those. Uh, I always tell people you're probably going to have to avoid you know, gluten and wheat forever. Milk you know, maybe not forever, but for the near and long, uh, near to midterm future. And I can't believe I even told you guys that, but I did. <laughs> uh, so wheat, barley, rye contains uh, similar proteins, and we kind of use gluten as sort of a catch-all term with those. But basically what it boils down to is uh, wheat, no matter what, you know, what kind of wheat you're talking about, barley or rye, they have things in it that look like thyroid peroxidase. So if you've got antibodies to wheat, you can develop antibodies to thyroid peroxidase and vice versa, and they can kind of be synergistic and make your immune system have a larger attack on your thyroid gland, so much so that you uh, develop uh, not just the antibodies, which we call euthyroid Hashimoto's, but you start developing actual dysfunction in how your hormones are made. Uh, there's a spectrum there, and I've got some other videos on those that you guys can See, maybe I'll, I'll link to them. Uh, so wheat and milk are number two. Now, with milk, people always ask, well, what about if it's raw? What if it's cheese or dairy? They've all got the same proteins in varying amounts, but they've all got the same proteins. So all milk, all cow's milk is out. And, and in fact, you know, goat's milk and sheep's milk should just be eliminated too. All right, so wheat and milk, two big foods that can trigger Hashimoto's. The other ones are not nearly as common, but can still happen. So I'll run through these a little more quickly. So we've got corn, okay, and then we have 
kidney bean. Now, there's this thing in kidney bean called phytohemagglutinin. That's the problem. And then we have P. lectin, lentil lectin, cod, and mushroom. Now, lectins are things that all plants have, and some have, you know, kind of more concentrations than others. But the point is, lectins are kind of this, this substance that uh, sometimes I tell people it's kind of like this it's kind of a soapy thing. The uh, point is, when you ingest them, you can develop antibodies. Your immune system can develop antibodies to these different lectins. And a lectin from a pea is a little bit different from the, lectal from, the lectin from a peanut or the lectin from a soybean. But what we know from the research that's been done is that pea lectin and lentil lectin look like thyroid peroxidase enough that your immune system could, you know, uh, get confused and increase the amount of thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Uh, cod and mushroom, similar story. It's not lectins, but there's just certain proteins in mushroom uh, and cod that are similar enough that your immune system can get them confused. So, you know, what do you do about this information? Well, I will tell you that if you have a family history of Hashimoto's, uh, then you might really strongly consider just not eating these foods because the more you eat them, uh, the more you're going to increase your odds of developing Hashimoto's. It's not guaranteed because even though this cross-reaction thing occurs, it's not guaranteed to occur. But if you wanted to be safe, that, that's what I would do, right? Uh, secondarily, if you already have Hashimoto's, uh, look up my other videos on like the perfect diet for Hashimoto's, you know, and the eight worst foods for Hashimoto's, because you're going to see this theme again. Uh, I really wouldn't be eating any of those things, and I probably wouldn't be even doing this kind of in a DIY fashion. I would make sure, uh, if I were you, I would be working with someone that is well versed in this and understands all these things I'm telling you about, because you know, I kind of make it sound simple, you know, and people are always looking for something they can grab and use, and you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you went on a gluten-free diet. Probably not, but I think you ought to be working with someone who's, you know, who knows a lot about this and has a lot of experience. So make sure you're working with someone who understands about these different foods and how they can be a problem. And, you know, if you've already got Hashimoto's, there's a lot that can be done for that anyway. So I have a whole big playlist on Hashimoto's and all the different things about it. Uh, but today, what I wanted to share with you is that uh, in the search for, you know, triggers and causes, I mean, this is what we know as far as foods go. And information may change, so you might want to check in every now and then on this channel to see if I've got new updated information. But for right now, uh, triggers for Hashimoto's in terms of food, wheat, milk, corn, uh, kidney bean, pea lectin, lentil lectin, cod, and mushroom.